session of Frontier Regional School District withdraw from the ask. Anybody second that? Do we need any? Sarah, do we have any other information? Does the administration recommend pulling out of the ask? Yeah. Do you um, um you back sir? Yes. Uh, and I'll tell you why. We do um, I'll, I'll tell you, explain why. We do uh, self-assessments. We have De Desi coming. Desi has done an assessment of us. We pay for CSMI, uh, curriculum, um, curriculum service management. or They've done a complete and thorough uh, evaluation of us just two years ago. And what we found was a lot more in there than if um, we did our own self-assessment and the teachers working in different pods. We also use a lot of that information in, in this uh, eval. A lot of the direction this district is taking is because we've had outside people assess yes. in our program. Yes. I just want to make sure that it's part of the evaluation of the director. I want to cut back on the services or we you know, Sarah and Louise, although we don't have control of Louise, but that they include those goals and monitor our performance. I'm sorry, I'm having a hard time. Are you talking about hands? Are you talking about hands? Yeah. 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 No, so what Neil was doing, I want to make sure that somebody actually looks at it on an annual basis to make sure that the goals are followed. Well, in talking to Sarah, it sounds as if we can go back and forth almost at will. So if we vote to come out and then we decide that that wasn't a good deal, it's not a huge issue to get back in. Um, so that's all me. Keith? You. Um, well, I heard the question, uh, does the administration support it? Yeah. I heard some explanation, but I didn't basically hear yes. Mm -hmm. She yes. said yes first. Very quietly. Uh, <laughs> well, no, I, I'm still a little thinking about the meeting, about my evaluation. But she, uh, what, as I said earlier, we have had outside uh, assessments or outside <coughs> audits, actually, of every piece of our curriculum, everything that we do. And we found it to be much more valuable. When I came in as a new superintendent, I read those thoroughly, and I have used them. And we're working on strategic goals for the district. I work with Louise and uh, Sarah and Kim McCarthy every month. And those are those are the uh, documents that we refer to. The outside audit you talked about going to be Desi. De Desi and we had one curriculum management service. What's CMSI? CMSI, <coughs> Management Systems Incorporated. Yeah. And that was a very thorough, uh, actually an audit that was very thorough. and very um, unbiased and we found a lot and that is where we get the direction for when we talk about personalized learning all the PD that's where we find a direction that is leading us forward especially in our instruction and curriculum and we don't have to pay the Desi people to sleep at the hotel my camp right the the NIAS people right. yes yeah. that's not the reason to, to withdraw but it <laughs> got along with everything yes, we a long time to do this dear <laughs> Um, so you want to tell anything else? I just want to clarify. Last uh, last month, it sounded like you were wanting to do away with me ask, and now you want to you want to stay in it. No, no, no. no. You just misunderstand. No, okay. just the opposite thing. All right. Yeah. I just what it sounded like tonight. You wanted to say you know, that it, the information was valuable. The information from the outside audits we get have been more valuable in helping us move forward as a, as a district, as an educational organization, than actually going inside and, you know, it, it just gives us more guidance. Okay, than doing I, I must have mis misunderstood. Our time would be better spent at the high school level doing PD time, learning and growing um, as in, in the, the areas we're going. It takes a lot of time to develop a BS report. It takes a year and a half, okay. and it's a lot of time. What do we pay for the BS? <laughs> 2000 a year? 3500 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, And then the visit costs about 10000 
Uh, no. The dude or the person? Yes, yeah, the dude would be in there, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're always we, short in dudes anyway. Oh, I know. I'm just curious whether we, uh, you guys saw the handwriting on the wall to get out. No, yeah. the first time I heard about it was last meeting. So, anyone else? No? All those in favor? Opposed? Sorry. One. One? You say no? I say no. Because I. Oh, you're an she can. No, because I can. Thank you. Moving on. You can. We're backing up. You just weren't ready, so we just forged. Um, good evening. There's 25 warrants that you signed for me tonight, totaling $1,399,655. I handed out the per people expenditures that were based on the FY16 and the reports um, that will be submitted to Desi. The uh, function code 2305 teachers classroom where we had that encumbrance um, problem, it has been corrected. Uh, Mr. Decker asked me to look at out-of-district tuitions um, to see if there's any more money that we could glean from there. I did review this with our SPED director and um, at this time because we're experiencing a little bit of a shortfall in our SPED revolver, she's comfortable allocating another 10,000 which is a total of 25 for the year that we've taken from there. Um, but we haven't used the whole 15 that we took out the first time. We're still waiting for the bills on the roof. So she's saying that we do have another 10 available. And that's all I have. Questions? Bob? I just want to know how the cafeteria revolving is coming. I am not on it right yet. Well. <laughs> I can't remember specifically what the deficit was. About 60 grand. Yeah. I hope it hasn't gone up further. Well, that was for an entire year, and we're not through the entire year, so I'm sure it's not up that high. Hopefully there isn't any. No, there will be. There's, they're always going to run in a deficit. We just had our administrative review, and the fact that Frontier has senior privileges, that seniors don't have to eat lunch, we're never going to make a profit. We're losing all those lunches. They were very clear about that in our administrative review. It will be difficult for us to make a profit because we, we lose most of our seniors not eating lunch. Okay. Um, so Thank moving you. on to school choice recommendations. Am I off? No, I'm on. Okay. School choice. Yep, you have a this sheet that looks exactly like last year. Um, basically, um, right now the you know the seventh grade it's probably not going to open up. I'm just asking for the ability to give up to five if for some reason um, there still needs to be a mass exodus, you know that kind of thing. But um, you know we could, we could take a few in eighth grade and then um, high school. I, we always I always write ten, but you know we probably get one or two um, per grade level coming in so it just gives me the, the freedom to uh, to do that and be con continue to be a school choice school so right. to really the, there you go the, the, but you want up to five in the seventh grade I, i'm just being realistically i'm not gonna we're not gonna get i don't even have that many i have that many applications for seventh grade but right now it's, it's full uh, because I, if you look at our numbers it's at, we're at 129 um that's the number i was looking at before um, that number, as you notice, has come down. We're starting to get um, feedback from those families who have chosen other um, educational options. Um, so, you know, we're now at a spot where it's still too many where I don't want to add. Um, but I'll take a look at that come May when we have a good firm. That number will be a lot firmer in May than it is right now. I just, yeah. But if, if we got up to five, would we have to add staff to handle it? I, I w that's the whole thing is I'm not adding any staff to take any of these numbers. That's the whole. That's why you, that's where you're giving me the freedom in, in the sense of that's why you have more openings in high school because the way the kids get spread out, we can we can take them without adding staff. So yeah. No so can I um, have a motion for the principal to use his discretion? Okay. Can you? <laughs> All those in favor? Any other discussion? All those in favor? Thank you, Darius. Yep. Um, Collaborative. We had quite a nice presentation tonight. Do you have anything to add to that, Lynn? Um, yeah, just a few dates. Um, April is Occupational Therapy Month, and they wanted to have a particular reminder of all the support that 
the initial therapist and again at the program. Also, April 23rd to the 29th is the week for the young child. So they have special programs going on there. They're continuing their social justice and equity in schools. June 5th is a full day workshop. And they continue to encourage everyone to check out their website for a lot more additional information. Principal report. Um, I don't have a handout because we just came out a week ago, but I do want to just make an announcement that the dugouts have been completed around the baseball diamond and the softball diamond, and they're doing a, I want to thank Breck Wanter and Deerfield Academy. They donated quite a bit of their time and resources to make that happen. Um, and Dave Fatel, who a teacher here, who's, who's one of the people behind making that happen. So on April 15th, there's going to be a ribbon cutting ceremony at noon. I just want to say it. April 15th, noon, um, on, on the fields there. So. And nice do more stuff make the paper right in the front. Yeah. 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 Was it on And I was also Above told the fold. Above the fold. Go ahead. I was also approached today to be the MC for tomorrow night at the Polish Club for the first annual ham raffle. Unfortunately I told I texted Steve during the meeting that I wouldn't be able to do it, but there is a ham raffle at the Polish Club tomorrow night. Similar to the turkey raffle, but a smaller scale, he told me. Okay. Did buy a hand, right? That's right, and we had all the great musical stuff, but that's all I said, you guys will hear it, so. That really was, and I saw some tapes of that, and that was really cute. You've got some budding musicians, um, or choir people. I just um, have one question. Go ahead. On, uh, I don't know if Lynn is, do you have any more conversation with Bill Deal relative to the Christian Lane building? Um, he said we'll talk, and then I haven't actually spoken to him since then. Okay. The, um, as you know, we know we're going to meet next Tuesday and talk about removing the oil tank. And then the other piece would be um, getting it ready. But one thing that I came to my mind after is with the lead paint that's in there, if they put a program in that didn't involve the younger children, that the lead paint can may not apply. I don't know if it does or it doesn't, but likely it may not, which makes it much more palatable to use for something. Right. And then we also have, of course, the Waitley um, select person, or I don't know what his job. Fred. Yeah, who uh, was interested, well, was looking at one of three things for a senior center for Waitley. Yeah. Anyway, thank you. I didn't want to bring it up when Bill was here. No, we did We did talk, but the oil tank and then the, um, the lead paint, he said, well, we'll talk. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. So voted. Yep.